Hi, we're Yvonne and Jeremy. We got married last year, and now we're exploring the U.S. full-time. In our last video, we explored the landforms and the animals of what seemed to be a different planet at Badlands National Park in South Dakota. Today, we're headed to Wind Cave National Park to explore its prairies, pine forests, and of course, the enormous cave. Welcome, Welcome to, to South Dakota. Dakota. This afternoon, we're spending our first partial day at Wind Cave National Park, but we're not spending time inside the Wind Caves on this first day. I mean, this is going to be a very different like park from what we usually do, because like what we usually do is like hiking on like long trails and then like basically summit like a mountain and then see really beautiful views. But I think today is going to be different because we're just mostly hiking on hills, and I think we will see a lot of like wildlife just roaming around on these hills doing their own things. It's a little bit windy today but it's a comfortable 70 some degrees. So we were planning to do the Lookout Point and Centennial Loop Trail. We were planning to walk on the Lookout Point Trail first but there is a group of bison here right along the trail and so we cannot safely go on that side of the trail so we'll have to make our way to the other side of the trail and hope that the bison are gone by the time we come back is a good idea for this trail. Landmines everywhere on this trail. So you can just imagine animals just crossing this trail pretty frequently. We just passed on the trail, said that there were bison laying on the trail, so they had to turn back and come back this way. So we have to face the reality that we might not be able to do this whole trail either. We are following this trail, hiking next to the creek, and wow, we see a bison on the creek drinking water, resting. Wow, this is so cool. Jeremy, you're okay now. Come on, you're okay now. Just come back. Okay, are you scared? I was scared to death. Oh my gosh. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Yeah. My heart is still beating so fast. Oh my gosh. The bison looked at Jeremy for so long and he was inching closer to Jeremy. Oh my gosh. I was like holding my breath the entire time. Oh my gosh. Oh. Like I just like can't even convey how I feel right now. I, I was just so scared for Jeremy. Like I, that animal was huge. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're okay, Jeremy. When Jeremy was walking on the trail, the bison took note of him. He crossed the creek and then onto dry land and they were just staring at Jeremy. It was so scary. He would just pause and he was just looking at Jeremy and then he started wagging his tail. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this what I think is gonna happen? Is he going to charge at Jeremy? Jeremy's not even doing anything. He was just standing there and then eventually he crouched down and then after a while he just played dead and all the while the bison was still staring at him moving a little bit closer at a time and then at one point like after a long while the bison eventually started walking the direction to the other bison to his friend and then i was getting relieved at that point but then he paused again and then turned back and looked at jeremy and i was like oh my gosh 
I just kept praying and praying that the bison would just let it pass, would just go past him, would just go to his friend, would just pass the trail, would just go onto the hills, and that's exactly what happened. I was just holding my breath and it just felt like an eternity. So moral of the story, it's good to stay 25 yards away from the bison at all times if possible, but if at all possible, even more than that would be even better. You can't stop them from coming closer to you, which is what happened today. I was definitely keeping my distance away from the bison, staying on the trail. The bison was on the other side of the creek. At some point, I needed to just lie down there on the floor and just pretend to be dead, show myself to not be a threat to him until he passed. And it just felt like an eternity just lying down there and waiting for Yvonne to give me some kind of heads up that it was okay to move and that he was past me. Well, because there were bison on both sides of the loop, we were unable to complete the hike, complete the trail because they were just in the way on both sides of the trail. I feel like the bison here in Wind Cave they're much larger than the ones in Yellowstone. I don't know if it's just the ones that we saw, but I just feel like they're gigantic. They're much larger and much less accustomed to people and cars. So we had to turn back, go back to our cars, and now we've spent a good chunk of time here in Prairie Dog Town, just watching and observing the prairie dogs. It's interesting because they are helpful to the ecosystem in that they chomp down on the grass and that make the, the grasslands appealing for different animals to come feed. They're also often hunted by other animals and so they are on high alert and they have their burrows and whenever we somewhat come close to them, they start to, to squeal and alert other prairie dogs that were coming close. But a key thing is if you walk slowly and still and if you shrink down and if they're aren't a lot of people near you, then you have a better chance of observing the prairie dogs as they do their thing. The prairie dogs are really cute and they are a lot smaller than marmots. So Wind Cave is the seventh least visited national park. People come here for the cave tours. So yeah, there's actually really not many cars on the road and not many cars going on these hiking trails. So the park is not big. Most of the caves are concentrated near the visitor center area. And then there are, you know, hills just around the park. It's just kind of nice to just have this all to ourselves and be able to photograph prairie dogs and just enjoy the plains, the fields, the hills, the trees. This is our second day at Wind Cave National Park. And as usual, it's a weekend. So all the cave tours have sold out completely. They did that by 9.30 this morning and it's about an hour, hour and a half away from where we're staying. So to get a cave tour, it would probably require us to get out here really early. We're on our first of two easy trails this afternoon. The first one is the Wind Cave Canyon Trail. It's just an easy walk. There will be some nice views and some wildlife. But hopefully it's a fun time. This trail is apparently good for bird watching, so I made sure to bring my binoculars. I'm prepared. Yvonne, what are you doing? I'm looking at birds. Looking for birds. So far, I haven't seen any. So, honest thoughts about the Wind Cave Canyon Trail. It was actually a very, very easy trail, just with nice canyon views with red rocks, some water along the way, and also some rolling hills with, with lots of shrubs and prairie grasses. It was really nice, a chill way to spend the afternoon. A little windy. Don't know if I would do it again. It was nice one time, but maybe not again. I brought these binoculars, but I didn't really see any interesting birds. All right, so right now we're going to start the Rankin Ridge Trail, which is a one mile loop that gives us a panoramic view of the park and Actually, if we go all the way up to the lookout tower, we might see Badlands there too. So I'm excited for that. Apparently this is not a very 
Difficult trail is pretty simple, about a mile, 200 to 250 feet elevation gain. So very simple and right now we're at the base of it. I'm just seeing trees and woods everywhere. So I think I will be pleasantly surprised when I get up there. Wow, cool. After going on that nice one mile loop, we got a scenic view from the highest point in Wind Cave and we saw all the way out to Badlands National Park and the Buffalo Gap. And it was just a really, really nice payoff compared to the effort that you put into it. So highly recommend the Rankin Ridge Nature Trail. Today on our third visit to Wind Cave National Park, we finally managed to arrive early enough to secure tickets for the cave tour. So we're doing the Garden of Eden cave tour. They're only doing two a day now because it's the off season. And then this is the one with fewer steps. Wind Cave is the seventh longest cave system in the world as over 150 miles of cave passageways have been found so far. All the time down here, wind cave's climate is always constant. It's always 54 degrees at 98% humidity. Wind Cave is especially known for a feature called boxwork, which is said to have been left behind by weathering from the ancient oceans that used to cover the Black Hills of South Dakota. Over 95% of the world's boxwork is found at Wind Cave National Park. I totally dehyped myself for this cave tour because the last time we were at a cave tour, it was not like the best experience for me because everything just kind of looked the same and then we were in the back and so we couldn't really hear much. But I really enjoyed this tour because I think the tour guide did a really excellent job just waiting for everybody and then explaining all the different details. And then he was also, yeah, very welcoming with yeah, the different questions. And so he was very comprehensive in this tour. So I enjoyed this a lot. I think I will go to another cave tour in the future. I appreciated that they kept the cave tour short and sweet. There was an elevator down to the bottom and they highlighted the unique features, told the history. The tour guide was just very thorough and personable and I would definitely recommend it. We're attempting the lookout point loop with the Centennial Trail. Again, don't see any bison yet. Hopefully we won't have any bison encounters like we did last time. After going one and a half miles on the lookout point trail, it's not totally clear where exactly the lookout point is, but we are headed back the way that we came because it's a five mile loop and I think a lot of the scenery is starting to look a little bit similar. So we're headed back now the way that we came. Yeah. 